Boom, we're on. Hi. Today's guest, we've got Jerry Powell. How are you, brother? Good, mate. How you doing? Yeah, good. So, <laughs> you're the man behind the madness of Rivmere. It's, um, it's a surreal experience, brother. Um, it's the first licensed medical centre for ayahuasca in the world. Yes. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you're an amazing man. Your Thanks. story's amazing. You're also fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> but obviously, you went through a tough time in your own life. Yes. Dr drink, drugs, yep. women, yep. gambling. You were a very wealthy and powerful man. But there was something missing inside. You were suicidal. You had all the money in the world. And you had a experience on ayahuasca, which changed your life. So before we get into Rhythmia, we'll go right back to the start, uh -huh. where it all began for you and where you grew up. Yep. So I was uh, raised in a, a working class, kind of shitty neighborhood. Yeah. Can I curse? Of course you can. Okay, okay, anything good. goes, brother. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I was in a... You know, a violent family or violent people. And uh, by the time I was a young boy, I was violent myself. I got sent home first day kindergarten, that kind of shit, you know. And uh, and I was just having a real hard time as a kid in school. I, 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 I couldn't do good in school. And then, then I got kicked out of school. Then I wound up in jail. And then, uh, and then I had... Terrible habits. I mean, terrible habits like uh, injectable Demerol, like uh, every drug under the sun. I loved strippers. I was married. Uh, I had a bunch of girlfriends, and I was miserable. And I mean miserable. I had I had just sold a company for about ninety million dollars, and I tried to commit suicide then, like crazy shit, huh? Oh. And um, I tried to commit suicide two times. And uh, the one time that I did, I almost had 70 million bucks in cash, you know. And uh, But I didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. And everybody kept saying, I looked like to my friends, it looked like I had the perfect life. I had a wife, two kids, a bunch of girlfriends, all the money I could spend, airplanes that looked great. And I was hanging on by a thread every day. I cried almost every night. Something was wrong with me. But I didn't know what it was. So one thing led to another, and I ended up, uh, drinking the medicine and uh, I was shown a video uh, like but a, a real video not like a, a video but a video that I could interact with yeah mm -hmm. I was shown a video of my grandfather molesting me as a little boy and it explained everything to me it explained why I was crazy I knew why I couldn't have a relationship with women I knew why I didn't trust any men uh, and it just all made sense to me and, and the next day after seeing that, well, the, the, they actually came and merged my soul back and gave me a new heart. Uh huh. It sounds crazy. It's fucked, yeah, right? Yeah. But, but it happened. Uh -huh. And then the next day I was whatever normal is. Uh -huh. I was normal for the first time in my life. Yeah. I was talking to people before this. I couldn't even have this conversation with you because I'd be thinking all yeah. this shit. And then for the first time I could, I could actually talk with someone. It was crazy. I never I never had the ability to do it in yeah. my life. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the catalyst for you? What was the turning point to go, I need help? Because you, you've tried uh, rehabs. You tried uh, every method under the sun to change. I was, I had tried everything and I was really getting ready to, to mm -hmm. kill myself. And I said, before I kill myself, this lady came to me and said that I have to try this thing. And I said, well, before I kill myself, what I said to myself is, before I kill myself, let me give this a shot. Mm -hmm. Because I was so, when I tell you I was upset, I was so upset I couldn't, I couldn't even think. I was so, my life was so crazy and bad. I couldn't even think and I was drinking myself to death. I mean, drinking myself, drinking so much that I would, uh, when I'd throw up, I'd throw up bile, you know, the, the mm -hmm. yellow stuff. I'd yeah, throw that yeah. like I was, Going. Killing myself. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people look and think a hundred million. Why the fuck is he not happy? But for me, money's an illusion. It, it is. doesn't really exist. Um, everything's within, and people understand that other people won't because the ones that are, aren't happy are the ones who are chasing money. Uh huh. So it's very. It's trying to find balance. It's trying to find balance. I agree. Um, but how did that affect your kids? Because you have two sons. Yeah. So. 
it was once explained to me too late that money is the great magnifier. So if you're a good, if you're really good and solid, money makes you even more good and more solid um, because it's so, but if you're, if there's a crack, then money's going to expose that crack. And my children were, had front row seats to the destruction. Yeah. So, so when I, when, when my wife left me of 20, 20 years, she took my kids. My kids wouldn't speak to me. They wouldn't speak to me. Uh huh. And now my children and I are closer than any father and son that I know and that I know. And it, 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 I'm so glad that they had the opportunity to see this Mm -hmm. so they don't make that mistake because it's easy to make the mistake. Mm -hmm. It's easy to think that money's going to fix it and money does not fix it. That's the goal in life is your kids seeing you doing well. That my kids are a reflection of me. Uh I never seen my kids for years in and out. I used to get my kids, but pass them on to my mum uh-huh. so I could go out and get fucked up. But Absolutely. Yeah, I was a great dad. Everybody thought I was a fucking great dad. Uh-huh. So when you actually work on yourself, it does, it awakens your horizons, it hi- heightens your senses um, to understand life a bit more. Yep. So obviously when you were, your, has your kids ever took ayahuasca? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they yeah. love it. Do they? They love it. Yeah. <laughs> so your wife left you after 20 years. Yep. Was that after you became clean? Or before? No, before. Mm-hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, she was a big factor in my turning myself around. Yeah. Uh huh. And she's the only broken relationship that I have in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Because she still yeah. is mad at me. Because yeah. I know you speak about when you change, your circle changes. It does. The people you surround yourself with is the changes. Pe- yeah, the people you're becoming. Um, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Basically. I love that. Yeah. I never even heard that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so. When That's a great saying. Is that a Scottish saying? It's my saying now. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you first took ayahuasca, uh-huh. what did you think? I thought, number one, I thought, I thought that I was going to be rendered into a fucking mental institution for the rest of my life. Like in that night, I was <laughs> like that fucking crazy <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought, mm-hmm. fuck, I've gone around the bend, mm-hmm. and that's it. So I thought, I honestly didn't know who I was. The next day, I thought, oh, I'm going to wake up in a straight jacket, and it's fucking over, mm-hmm. you know? And and the craziest thing happened is that I had peace the next day. There was some kind of strange peace that was going on. It's like somebody cracked my head open and shook all the pieces, and then they were coming back in a normal way. That was yeah. crazy, yeah. So... How, where did you go to do the ayahuasca? Down the street from here. Yeah? Yeah, about an hour uh-huh. and, and two hours from here. Four days? Well, uh, the first one that I did was iboga. Uh-huh. Mm. And then, then later I did the ayahuasca. The iboga was the first journey that I had where I went crazy. Mm-hmm. And that was with an African shaman. He was a wonderful shaman. Yeah. I was no longer in this country, though. So when you came out of that ayahuasca experience... It wasn't all fucking rainbows and butterflies straight away. Yeah, it was. It what? was, I'm going to tell you the yeah. truth. It was, it was, I was in such pain mm-hmm. that just by virtue of the pain stopping, uh-huh. I was dancing Yeah. because I was in such pain. Now, a lot of people that aren't in that kind of pain, it takes longer for them to, mm-hmm. to realize what happened. But I was in such pain. I mean, I, my barrel, my gun was rusty. Like I was always at in my, I was ready to, 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 to kill myself at any minute, yeah. you know? So when it, when the pain stopped, it felt like, you know, if you have a stone in your shoe for 20 years and somebody takes it out, oh my God, I can walk. It was yeah. like, it was just amazing for me. Why do you think the reason you never pulled the trigger? I, cause I must have known that there was a different way. I must have known. I really thought I was, I thought I was defective. Do you know what I mean? I thought that, that there was something deformed, fucking fucked wrong up, with yeah. me, you know? There is Jerry, but in a good way now. <laughs> I love that yeah. you're right. We're all fucking crazy. We are crazy. all crazy. When I'm doing the ayahuasca and there, it's, it's like a mental institution. I forget what age I am. Uh-huh. Do I have kids? Uh-huh. Who's my mum? It's like everything's fucking blank. Uh-huh. The one great thing though is the stars. When you look at Reconnect. the stars, you feel as if you can touch them. Uh-huh. It's uh-huh. and the shaming and the, the people in there—they're amazing people. Uh-huh. But because I'm so guarded, 
I question everything. Ah, yeah. I think, what the fuck is this? Is this an illusion? Am I... I don't know. It's so hard to explain. I know. But they keep telling me to breathe and relax. But you can't because I'm seeing fucking hell. I'm seeing the devil. I'm seeing people that I don't like. I'm seeing fucking Michael Jackson. It's, um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's weird, man. It's fucking weird, bro. What was Michael Jackson doing? Moonwalking. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, and I'm trying to get my bearings and it's, it's, the first two nights were painful. When I did ayahuasca last night, I was at ease, and then I had a breakthrough. As if to say something came to say, um, "You're good enough." Yeah. You're good enough. Yeah. And then I woke up and I felt amazing. I woke over to Sharon. I said, "I need to share something with you, brother." And I says, "I'm good enough." And I think he was crying, and he said, "And it's so, it's I don't know if I, I just remember that there." Uh huh. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Shit, it's it? fucking <laughs> mental. So ayahuasca. Then what is ayahuasca to you? I, I just think ayahuasca is a gateway to the soul. So, so I know it's chemical components and all that stuff. And that is an earthly look. It actually is a gateway to your soul. You know, when, when you're drinking alcohol, you know, the, the overriding voice you hear is the voice of your ego. You know, when you smoke weed, sometimes you hear the voice of your subconscious. But when you drink ayahuasca, you hear the voice of your soul. It's a very unique thing. Yeah. And when that soul starts talking, and, and so first thing that happens, you just think of it like a dirty closet. Mm -hmm. Like first thing that happens, is it goes in and cleans out all that shit from the closet. And then your soul can start talking. And like you're, the last thing it said to you that says, James, you're enough, right? Mm -hmm. You're enough. That's because all of that other shit was getting cleaned out. And now you can start hearing your soul and your soul's nothing but love, yeah. even for a tough guy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't care what someone's background is. Their soul predates all that shit. Yeah. And their soul is only love. But you don't know it because you're walking through life with bills mm -hmm. and kids and ex-wives and whatever the fuck is going yeah. on. And you're caught in a fight. But the, the whole time, the essence of you mm -hmm. is love. And you don't. It's, it's, if I were to sit here and talk to you about love and then you didn't have the medicine it's a hard concept yeah because life is showing me that there's not love and yet you're telling me there is a but once the medicine hits boom you yeah. get to see it's just love mm -hmm. and a good shit yeah because there's 60 <laughs> 70 different people in there and it's people who have everybody's got problems yeah there's people who are doctors yep. surgeons yep. policemen army yep all different ages from 21 to 75. Yeah. I see the older people in there and I go, that's respect. I um, know. We're constantly searching and it takes a lot of courage to come here and try and heal. It does. Um, because they say doing ayahuasca here for four days is like 10 years of therapy and meditation all hitting you at once. Yep. It's, um, it ain't an easy ride. It's it not. It ain't an easy ride. But when you listen to people's stories, it's heartbreaking because I was crying yesterday listening to when you did your, your talk. I know. Also, Jerry, when you talk, you see people. You know their names. You know what happened to them. Yeah. Have you got the intuition? Are you a spirit? Are you like a spiritualist? I get intuition. Yeah. When I see someone start to cry, mm -hmm. I can tell why they're crying. Okay. Yeah, and I, that, I felt so bad for that, the one lady I said, my heart. Yeah. I started crying. Same, you know? yeah. You know? Same, yeah. It's so... Did that gift come? Everybody's got the gift. Yeah, everybody has it. Yeah. What happens is this. You have it. Yeah. You have it just like I have mm -hmm. it. But the thing is, there's, there's stuff that's in the way. Mm -hmm. And as the medicine moves out the things that are in the way, you'll look at someone and say, oh, this guy's from Texas and this guy's from... Huh. You just know it because you already knew it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's not something that you discover. It's something you rediscover mm -hmm. in you. Yeah. yeah. You said your best, one of your best friends when... You've seen him, no matter where you were, if it was church, you'd been a strip joint half an hour later doing blow. No matter where I saw him. Doing blow. <laughs> and you started changing, and then your friend now says about, you don't speak to him anymore, but your friend says, yeah, remember Jerry before he went crazy? Before I went crazy. Yeah, he that, thought that yeah. was normal. <laughs> 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 Fucking crazy. Um, so, because you went to rehab in Miami, and uh, no, I went in California. California, to Malibu. Malibu, yeah. sorry. And you, what was it, hundred thousand? Hundred thousand a month. Month. Mm -hmm. And did you escape? 
I know I stayed two months there. Yeah. Yeah, two months. But uh, when I got out, I drank within uh, just under an hour. I was drinking. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So like, you know, because yeah. you, know, you can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can. Yeah, of course. You can. But if you do it through rehab, that only means you just waste some money in rehab because you were ready to do it anyway. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. So I don't believe in rehab. So Rhythmia, it's a five-star resort. The place yeah. is stunning. Who would you suggest? Can, is this open for anybody and anyone? Is there anybody you would say, no, you're not ready? Yeah. So something in you knows when you're ready. So all those people that you see here, because this is a hard week. Anybody that has a place like this that tells people it's easy is fucking a liar. Mm -hmm. This is fucking hard. Yeah. And, and, and if you're not willing to go through what's hard, then you're just going to waste your money, yeah? And I don't want anybody to waste their money. So, so the thing is, if you hear this and you feel like you want to go, that's because your soul is ready to do it. Like you were ready, even though you think you're not or might, might have the thought that you, you weren't, mm -hmm. you're ready because you said yes to it when it was presented, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the people out there that listen to your podcast and that, that, that follow you, that hear this and it resonates with them, even if they're afraid, because anybody who hears this the first time goes like, that's interesting, fuck, I'm afraid of that. That's the natural mm -hmm. shit. Those are the ones who are ready. Huh? People who hear it and go, that's bullshit, they're fucking crazy, they're not ready. And their soul knows they're not ready. They have to do more earth time. They have to do more... Uh, like groundwork on themselves? Yeah. In life, work. yeah. I think in life, no matter what you do, Jerry, good or bad, people judge. When I was a wanker, when I was a, a dick, was uh, people were fucking... <laughs> it was an excuse for them to hate me, even yeah. though I was... A treat, I, would, I would fuck anyone's girlfriend. I, would, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't care. But then when you become a better person, which I think... People still fucking hate you anyway. They hate for getting better. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Because it shines a light on their life that Absolutely. why can't I get mm -hmm. to that level? So the more successful I become, the more fucking hate that Absolutely. comes with it. And I, I'm one of those men, I want to be loved by everyone. Yes. But that's a part of me that I want to change here. Uh -huh. Because the first night I was here, I said, show me who I've become. And all I could do was laugh. Uh -huh. The reason being is because all through my pain and misery through my life, all I've done to laugh is uh -huh. mask it. Uh -huh. is mask it and laugh at everyone and do stupid shit. Even when people die, I just fucking laugh because uh -huh. I don't want to feel the pain. I know. But now, the in Rhythmia, you feel, you fucking you feel, feel it. it oh, it's horrible. I and know. I curse you. I go, that fucking <laughs> bastard, voodoo doctor, just fuck, I'm never coming back here. And then after lunch, I'm ready to fucking go again. <laughs> I tell you what, you've been in lots of scary situations, right, yeah. in your life? Yeah, many. It takes a lot of guts to to drink that shit, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, it big really time. Does. It yeah. takes a lot of guts. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you've had over 5,000 people here. Yes. Very high percentage of people that have healed. You're in the 90s, 96%. 94.2 yeah. right so, now. Which is amazing. How do you keep track of those records? As soon as they leave, you're going to get a an electronic survey. Uh -huh. And you just check it off. Uh -huh, and then it gets computed through a program. So it's constantly changing every day, every weekend when people check out, it changes. But the, the more interesting part is that of those 94%, so it's 94, 940 out of 1,000, that six months later, 97.55% of them, because we send it to six-month checkout, mm -hmm. you get another survey in the email that you just click off the things. Mm -hmm. But six months later, it's still working. See, a lot of these workshops and things and books, you know, you put the book down, you feel great. Three days later, you're doing the same shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? mm -hmm. This really sticks because it works on a part of you that, that you can't get to through a book. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, Costa Rica, nobody's ever had a license to do ayahuasca. No. And it's a very Christian-run place here. Yes. So, places like ayahuasca and going into... Deeper consciousness. It's trippy shit. It's, it's like, um, for people who don't understand it, it's, you're going deep. You're in a reality that you don't see, but you feel when you're on ayahuasca. So for people who, listen, I, I don't believe in religion. Religion is to divide the world because it's easier for people to control. Uh -huh. Then, so 
how did they treat you coming here? Well, initially they didn't, they weren't too welcoming to me. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, because uh, there's all this data that shows that we're doing this amazing job, now they're kind of coming around to liking what we're doing. And, and the craziest thing is this, this is what I love about ayahuasca. If you're, uh, if you're a Christian, you'll bump into Christ on ayahuasca. If you're really a devout Christian, you'll see Christ on ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. So it's not in conflict with anything. You know, the teachings of Christ and the teachings of Mother Ayahuasca are the mm -hmm. same. Love one another, yeah. be kind. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. simple, basic yeah. shit. So, Doctors must um, really hate you then. Yeah, they probably don't like me too much, yeah? So if I was, I'm glad I'm down here in Costa Rica because if I was in the United States, I wouldn't, I would be fearful of my own life because, you know, that, that, you know, big pharma doesn't cure anything. And we watch people get cured of all kinds of things. I mean, for real, cancers, uh, Lyme's disease, uh, autoimmune disorders of, of all different types, herpes that they never had in the first place. That's why I'm here, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, edit that out. <laughs> uh, depression, uh, people depression. who are suicidal, and I've seen the change in people opening up over there. Oh my God, yeah. For some, obviously Gordon's not drinking. Uh -huh. He must be standing there thinking, what the fuck? Cause I, I can't I, imagine I, yeah, what he's thinking. Because I'm doing that, and but you see people opening up, you've got people talking about stars and the star gods came to see me and I'm like that, fucking hell. But I, I, kind, I kind of understand it, but I don't, I don't think I want to uh -huh. accept it. That, yeah, it's, um, it's a surreal experience, Jerry. It is. It's, it's magical, but madness at the same time. I know. It's, um, but for a lot of people who take drinking, drugs and gambling, womanizing, that's escapism also. Absolutely. And we spoke about pharmaceutical. More people die in this world with pharmaceutical drugs than any other drug in the world. Listen, they don't create, death by yeah, prescription. They don't create cures, they create customers. Yep. So, again, when scientists put a study to say 9.5 that this can help, it's, it's, one, it's a, the highest behind meditation. So, even the breathing techniques we did here, I was fucked doing the breathing. Yeah. Which is... Did you see things? In I, was I was tingling. You see like stars. It's like you black out. And it's like you go into your inner child as well. Mm -hmm. This is all so real. For people who are watching this, search it. Look into it. If you're struggling, there's always help. There's always remedies. It's not necessarily like this is right for everyone. Right. But it's right for us. It's yep. right for people here because they believe it. Yep. Do you think the placebo effect can come into play also? I would hope so. You know, because anything that heals the people. You know, the, the, the funny thing is this though. If you ever did a double blind study, mm -hmm. you'd fucking know when you were on ayahuasca. <laughs> like yeah. there's no, you know, if we, if, if we all had a drink and one of us had ayahuasca in it, mm -hmm. the other two would know real quickly because this guy would be, so there's, <laughs> not, you know, yeah. so there's not really a way mm -hmm. to judge. But, but the thing that I can tell you is that with the placebo effect, most people can't feel what's going on. With ayahuasca, you just feel so yeah. much. You're actually watching yourself mm -hmm. heal. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, it's powerful. So obviously I watch a lot of men like Joe Spencer, and they say they can train the neural pathways and yeah. change the mindset and change the belief. Here it's like you're shown things to ask the ayahuasca also. One of the questions you say to ask the ayahuasca when you're drinking it is, merge me with my soul. Yes. What does that mean? Uh -huh. So we believe that, that, and we were shown on, on the original journey, the Iboga journey, that sometime between when you're conceived and about five years old, you get scared by something, usually in your house, and you split from yourself because it's not, it's not safe to be vulnerable. So you leave your soul, and then that person becomes the football player, the wise ass, the class clown, the whatever the fuck, then he becomes the doctor, the lawyer, the Indian, as he gets older, but he's still split. So, so we ask whatever God is to come in and to, to heal us back. And that is what heals every part of us mm -hmm. is this remerging. Yeah. Uh -huh. You have three different questions. I think one is show me who I am. Yeah. Merge me with my soul. 
and heal my heart. Yes. So why in that order? Uh huh. Interesting because because you won't merge back with your soul. Your soul won't let you merge until you understand who you are. Once you understand who you are, then the soul can merge because because they want to know that you're not going to do it again. Uh huh. The soul does. And then once you're merged, it can heal your heart from the damage that you caused yourself. You know, everybody thinks the world did it to me, but you did it to you. And so, so once you're merged, uh, and, and, and your psyche and your soul is sure that you're not going to do it again, they can come back in and heal your heart. Yeah. And then you walk out of here a brand new guy. Mm -hmm. You really walk out of here a brand new guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why a lot of people are fearful because a lot of people think they're happy and then when they take it, everything uh -huh. fucking changes uh -huh. and it scares the shit out of them even more <laughs> to realise, okay, I don't want to be a doctor, I don't want to be a policeman. Um, I well, want to listen. go and fucking grow fruit in Costa Rica. And, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's Imagine like, being... 50 years old, mm -hmm. married for 20 years, and realizing you shouldn't have been married for, t like that yeah. you're a person who yeah. Well, it's fear. People are Lots controlled of fear. with fear. Yeah. So that you're very, you're a very um, intelligent man. You're clearly a very business orientated. So when you got, how did the idea of Rhythmia come about? The, the medicine told me I had to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that there wasn't a place, see, because <clears throat> like the cultural differences between an average American, an average Canadian, an average uh, Englishman walking into uh, an Amazonian tribe that doesn't even speak Spanish, but speaks uh, a, a dialect to, for you to understand what's going on there. It's, it's so much. So the medicine needed a bridge. It needed... Uh, a more westernized way of, of, of looking at uh, ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And so that's why uh, they told us we had to do it. Yeah. And, and we did it. We did so, it. So a shaman, what is, what is a shaman? Well, the thing is now, that's, that's an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're uh, different things to different people. But what I see the men is, is they themselves are the bridge between between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. And and people hearing this are gonna say, well, they're talking crazy shit. But you know for a fact, there's two worlds and they're lined up right up against each other. That right now, you and I are in this one. Mm -hmm. And in about 12 hours, we're gonna be yeah. in another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when I laugh, the girl, is it Sarah, Sarah? Uh -huh. When I laugh, see I laugh, and that gets everybody else laughing. Uh -huh. She'll go, <laughs> boom. Dead again, yep. silent. Yeah. What is that? Uh huh. She was getting your energy back where where it should be. So she did she blow Chindu on you? She was fucking across the other room though. Uh huh. She yeah, was, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what. Boom. Yeah. Shut up. Crazy, right? What is what is that then? Ah, uh, that's somebody who's bridged both worlds enough. Does she float? Does she float? Float? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. What she do? She's where, where we're used to space here. Yeah. Like you're here, that tree is there. Mm -hmm. Up there, everything's in one. So she's right next to you yeah. when she's way away. Because but when she goes round the bed, she's like she's like a fucking snake, and it, I, I'm, I, I just I just put the cover over my head. <laughs> it's it, honestly, it is fucking weird. It is. Oh, it's so weird. You've got people shitting themselves, being sick, screaming, people laughing. There's people out there who love the experience. Yeah, They're yeah. just so blown away. Were by... you were you Christian? Yeah, I was raised Catholic. Catholic? Yeah. Do you remember the concept of purgatory? Yeah. Tell me that that's not purgatory yeah. up there. Yeah. Doesn't it sound like the gateway to hell? Yeah. Like, <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Fire, yeah. Like it sounds yeah. like the gateway to hell. Uh -huh. And yet it's the gateway to heaven. Yeah. Crazy. Madness. Madness. So where did the entrepreneurial skills come from then? If you went through that life of so misery and pain? I actually think that I didn't have a choice. So, you know, my only way that I thought to, to placate my pain was to make money. And I thought that was the solution. I thought, you know, fuck, if I just had money, 
I wouldn't feel this way. Uh huh. And it wasn't true, but I got very good at it. Mm -hmm. I got good at not, not very good. I mean, there's people that made a lot more money than me, but based on what I started from, I got good at it. You mm -hmm. know, I got good at it. Yeah. So can through that transition to where you are now, see when you were changing and making the sacrifices, you must have took responsibility yeah, also. Absolutely. Which is the first big step to big step. create change. Yeah. How was that feeling for you to admit you were an, ad an addict? Not really a nice person. You were more orientated. You thought the other things in life were the things, the materialistic things, the attention. When you had to strip all that back and really figure out who the fuck you were, how was that experience? Hard. Yeah. Super hard. Because... You know, what's so funny is guys like us, yeah, think we're Superman and nothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. We think, oh my God, I'm fucking great. One second. And then when we get with ourselves, we're like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. Uh -huh. So I had this, this terrible split of, and that's what was driving me crazy. Everything is this split. Yeah. So when it comes back together and we understand that we're responsible for every single piece of our life. We're responsible for how our kids are, honestly, how they, our relationship with our children. We're responsible for uh, our relationship with our mom, with our, with our wife, with our whatever, and, and with money, our relationship with, we're responsible for everything. That there's no free lunch, yeah. then all of a sudden shit gets really real. Yeah. Uh huh. So when you take ayahuasca, what does it do to your brain? Well, they say that it creates new neuropathways. Uh huh. So, so there's, there's these clusters where things get fucked up over an emotion. So maybe, you know, the first time that you were punched by your father. Yeah. That all of a sudden, uh, and now every time you hear that sound, you're reliving that punch by your father. Well, there's a, a roadblock in that neural pathway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now the ayahuasca creates a new neural pathway. And now the sound no longer means that to you. Uh huh. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Huh? Because when you think about trauma and pain, a lot of people live in the past. When you think about the trauma, maybe 10, 20 years ago, the brain releases a chemical to the trauma that you had felt that day. Absolutely. So and it the, feels the yeah, same yeah, way, right? Yeah. So the brain doesn't know what's real or what's fake. Correct. Which is powerful. Yeah. It's very powerful. It's, yeah. um, I'm trying to understand the brain a bit more to realize. Yeah. I wanted to know where my addictions came from, my uh -huh. womanizing. I just wanted my anger. But it can get passed down from generation to de it generation. Can. It can be in your DNA. So, again, when they say you take ayahuasca, they say it can heal not just you, but your kids, kids, kids. Absolutely. Kids. Why is that? Because as you change, you're a vibrational being. You know, I never knew what the fuck. When I, when I heard people talk about vibration, I would say to myself, fucking idiot hippies. <laughs> They're fucking idiot hippies. Yeah. They're fucking stupid. No vibration. You're solid. I'm solid. Huh? But then when you get over in the medicine and you see that you are a vibration, you're a vibration and you're vibrating at a particular rate. So when you change your vibration, you change that of your children, of their children, of their children by you changing. So you were the key to everything. You're the key to everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool shit, eh? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's... Wild, though. It's wild. And to hear someone yeah. talk, if I were 30 years old again, mm -hmm. and I heard some fucking idiot talking like I'm talking mm -hmm. now, I would think, this motherfucker's lost his yeah. shit. We've all He's lost our shit. <laughs> why is that, why is it such a, there's 60 or 70 people in a room, why is it so everyone together? Why is that? Is that a vulnerable factor? Uh, I have my own belief on that, yeah, that, uh, that kind of like being in jail, that you get so close to people in this, in this environment and, and your closeness isn't a detriment. It's a fucking assist. So the fact that you have this relationship and what it does, it trains us for the outside world. See, it used to be me and them. It was me against fucking everyone. Even though I, I would pretend to be nice sometimes, it was me against them. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is what this will awaken you to, that there is no them, that it's just us in this together. Yeah. And then when you leave and you carry that out into your life, 
things work different. Yeah. Uh huh. When you, uh, yes. Um, crazy shit. Yes. Yeah? It as it's crazy. So, why is ayahuasca then to you? Why is it such so powerful for you to try and create? mass awareness and change from it. Because a lot of people in the UK don't know what ayahuasca I'm is. I'm sure. And then yeah. when people look at it, people say, I, I want to do that. Other people will go, you're fucking crazy. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we're all, as human beings, we're I always say we're constantly searching, Jerry. Uh -huh. We're constantly searching. When you did your ayahuasca, after your four days, how long was the transition for you? I know you said you felt great and you didn't feel the suicidal thoughts, but did you still party? Were you still trying to get in? The zone. Well, yeah, I, I partied for a while after mm -hmm. it, and, but, but not the same way. Yeah. So like what I noticed is this, I would drink half as much as I used to drink. Then I would drink 70% less. Then I would drink 90% less. Yeah. Uh huh. So like it took a while for it to, yeah. to, to, to go away completely. Yeah, of course, because but, if you're doing something for 20 or 30 years, it doesn't just disappear overnight. But here's what does disappear. Mm -hmm. The feeling of it feeling good. Yeah. So the difference was this. Immediately when I did it, I didn't feel good anymore. There was no feeling of it yeah. feeling good. Because when you're here, you start realizing what you're feeding your body. I don't eat as much here. And I eat so uh -huh. much shit back home. Uh -huh. Gordon as well. We eat so <laughs> much pizzas and curries. and um, but Pizza and... Like curry, like Chinese or uh, curry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. when you do that, you're not conscious actually what you're putting into your body. Mm -hmm. Here, you, just, you realize you don't need that much food, right. and you actually the food you're eating is so enjoyable. Yeah, it fucks with your mind, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when you created all the change and created Rivmia, it took you one year to get your license. Yeah, and why did you keep fighting to get it? Because I believed that we could get a, a medical license. I just, I just believe. The medicine said that we could. Mm -hmm. And I believe the medicine, you know? I yeah. believe the medicine. What's interesting is that everything that the medicine tells you, if you do it, it works out. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, it gets weird because it's like if God came to you and said, hey, you got to do this differently. Yeah. And you're like, ah, I don't think so. You'd feel weird, mm -hmm. right? To say, no, I'm going to do it my own way. Yeah. How many ceremonies have you did, Jerry? 240 something as of tonight. Does it get easier or do you learn how to control it? No, nah, there's no control in it. What you, what you learn to do is to have a healthy respect for it. Like even right now, we're going up there tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm worried, you know? <laughs> because it's a 12 hour, it's a 12 hour shift. Yeah, it's, it's a 12 uh, hour shift tonight. Yeah. yeah. And it's live music and. Yeah, it's a beautiful it, night. Yeah. See, when I lie in my bed, see when music comes on, people, when they all dance, because there's a man next to me and I, I can see him and it's, it is, it's beautiful to see them all dancing. But then again, you think, but oh, then the covers come back over the head because it's, <laughs> what the fuck is going on, man? So what's the, when you take ayahuasca and then you change, how hard is it for people to adjust to open, maybe I don't want to be in that relationship. So, because the first day we were here, Jerry, uh -huh. one of the men had not spoke to his mum for maybe 25, 30 years because he thought he blamed his dad's death on his mum. The, the first night after ayahuasca, he'd phoned his mum to say sorry. We got him on camera. He's going to be in the documentary. Uh -huh. um, powerful shit, that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So why is that feeling? Well, the thing is, I want to answer your first question. Like yeah. the, that adjustment period is about two to three mm -hmm. weeks of it being awkward, you know? By awkward, like your old mates, yeah? You're hanging out with them and you're thinking, I, I don't even really wanna be here, is mm -hmm. the kind of feelings you get. But then after two and a half, three weeks, it stabilizes, it really does. And you start to see joy in your new life. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I don't have to do that to have fun. And this feels like fun. And that guy is interesting to me and I used to think he was a jerk. Why is he interesting to me now? So things change, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the people around you, whether you say anything or not, notice you're different. And they, you get a lot of this. Hey, did you cut your hair? Or did you do? And you're like, no, I didn't do anything. And they're like, well, you look different. And you know why you look different? Because you're, you're centered mm -hmm. and you're paying attention and they're not used to you doing that, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. So everything changes, yeah. yeah. So for people to forgive, because one of the questions, one of the questions that I asked was, 
teach me how to forgive and also teach me how to trust. I don't trust anybody. Even coming here, I was like, ah, fuck everybody. Jerry, I don't trust you. I, I don't, don't trust cash. Is, am I getting tricked? But then as time goes along, I'm starting to learn to trust. Yeah. Because over there, nothing's forced upon you. Right. You do it on your own pace. You yep. do it on your own time. Yep. It's what's right for you. Some people have one cup. There's some people have three and four. Yep. It's what's right for you. So why do people forgive so quickly after 25, 30 years of not uh -huh. Why, of hate? Like Why do people forgive uh, so because quickly? Because they get to see it from the other person's point of view. Mm -hmm. So, like, the person that, even the person that shot at you, uh -huh, mm -hmm. in their mind, at that moment, they had no choice. And when you see that, your heart grows for them. Mm -hmm. And when your heart grows for them, you release them and they release you. It's yeah. beautiful shit. Yeah, because you says your relationship with your mum you started seeing her differently. Absolutely. But then she also automatically changed towards you. Absolutely. Why is that? Because you can't change. If you're, if we're locked in a, a struggle, me and you, uh, and we're not fist fighting, but we're in a, a war of some type. Uh huh. Mm. And then I change and I don't want to fight you anymore. All of a sudden you get disinterested in doing that and you start looking deeper as to what's going on. And you might find some commonality with me. You might end up liking me because mm -hmm. I change. So you can't, if you have two people and they don't change, that's a, that's a lifetime fight. Yeah. They'll go on and yeah. on and on. Is that the law of attraction comes into play it as well? It does, yeah. So you did a story yesterday, Jerry, on the guy who was clacking his teeth. Yeah. yeah, can yeah. you tell that story, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all of these people, the people that you're seeing here, in my understanding, you've been with them before, their soul. And they're all here to help you. Uh huh. So you're here to help them. They're here to help you. And, and you have to pay attention to what you don't like. Uh huh. So if there's another guy, you don't like this guy. And we all people we don't like, right? Mm -hmm. But if somebody is doing something and I really don't like it, I have to pay super close attention to it because it's trying to tell me something about me. Uh, instead of being mad at that person, I'd say, oh, fuck, what is the message for me? Uh -huh. And that is the thing with the ayahuasca is that, that I'm sure your people's pain in the ass here. Uh -huh. Do you understand what I mean yeah, by yeah, that? Yeah. That like you're creating a disruption for them. But what is the lesson for them? They're doing that in their own life somewhere. Mm -hmm. So almost everything is a clue. We had a a lady that was being followed around by a guy who had gas, because the medicine fucking give you gas, yeah, you know yeah. that, right? People shit themselves, yeah. Shitting themselves. <laughs> he had gas, and then he had false teeth that would clack in each other. And and this guy kept following this lady. Every night she would move, and he'd follow her around. And, and he probably didn't even know he was doing it. It was done on a sub subconscious level. And finally she had it. And in the moment of her flipping out, she realized that she had become a woman who's intolerant of people. Uh -huh. And that was her lesson. And she thanked this guy, like, honestly, loved this guy for teaching her the lesson. Mm -hmm. So, so you gotta watch yourself mm -hmm. and, and who in this group do I really have an energetic dislike for? Mm -hmm. You know that some people you can dislike without they saying the word, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You just see them Feel and go, I don't fucking like yeah, this guy, yeah, yeah. or I don't like this lady, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Pay super close attention to that person. Mm -hmm. They have a message for you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's powerful because the man who was clacking his teeth and farting, she wanted away from him, but then the woman kept speaking to him. Yep. And then she said, "Okay, I understand. It's me." But then that man moved away from he her. He did. Because yeah. she kept talking? Because she was crying. <laughs> and, it, and he didn't want to be around yeah. someone who was crying. So uh -huh. what's the plan for Jerry Powell at, what's the plans for you going forward for the future? How many Rhythmia centers do you want to open worldwide? Uh -huh. So if I was a young guy, if I were in my 30s, uh -huh, I would already be opening more of these. But what I want this to do is to become super successful so that other people want to open them up. Mm -hmm. I actually think there should be one in Scotland, one in England, yeah. one in Italy, one in France, one yeah. in Switzerland, one in Africa, one in, I think there should be one everywhere because you see what people don't understand. People think 
that they have to live in pain. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to live in... This life can be a gorgeous experience. It can be a, a beautiful, rich, loving experience. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when somebody would hear that, like if I heard somebody say that 12 years ago, I would think, what is this asshole selling? Mm -hmm. Like what kind of bullshit is this? Mm -hmm. And yet I know it to be true. Yeah. That, that you can live a beautiful, loving, rich, fulfilled life. It's yeah. good, good shit. Oh, it's a great feeling. It's uh, a great feeling, Jerry. So your kids, your ex-wife, everyone is in great terms with you. Did you do a lot of healing and forgive also? The only one who's not in great terms with me is my ex-wife. Okay. Uh, and I love her to be. Mm -hmm. But I hurt her so badly, dude, that, that she is every, she is every uh, reason to yeah. not forgive me. But everybody else in my yeah. life has forgiven me. Does that yeah. still upset you, Jerry? Yeah, because she was my best friend. Yeah. You know, she was my best friend for, and honestly, I went out with her for 10 years before I married her. Mm -hmm. So that lady represents 32 years of my life. Yeah. And she, she was a great friend. She was yeah. a good woman, yeah. you know? But you would have made her a lot stronger. Uh, the I'm sure I did. Brought you, <laughs> brought you, um. I got to tell you, I yeah. think I got her into heaven free. <laughs> You're putting up with your shit. But it's also made you very vulnerable and made you more open to see who you hurt in the past. Yeah, yeah, Which is yeah. a beautiful thing yeah, yeah. to forgive. That's where you've got to, again, not just take responsibility for your addictions, but also take responsibility for your actions. Yeah. Because everything has a ripple effect. It does. Um, when you yeah. do bad shit, it doesn't just affect you. It affects a whole fucking load of people. I agree. When you see people healing, Jerry, how does that make you feel? I feel much better about me. You know, when I see, like, I don't get paid anymore, right? right? So, and my, uh, my other, my other businesses used to net with this grosses, right? So it's a whole different world. Yeah. But what I do get, I get to watch these people. And it's such, it's more than money. It's mm -hmm. worth more. When you see this group that you're with on Saturday, mm -hmm. I get to see that 50 times a year. Mm -hmm. I get to see, People leave their pain. That's something else, man. Yeah, it's it's really great yeah, shit. Me, Gordon, we did the homeless documentary. And everything I do, Jerry, is for me. Yes. But I also I do things in a good way where I'm rewarded. So if yes. I'm doing homeless work or suicide work, it's benefiting me. Uh -huh. Even though I'm helping others, I'm fucking winning. Because yeah. there's no... There's no um, car or house can get you that satisfaction There's of not. seeing a smile on someone else's face. There's not. Um, even though it's painful, yep. even though it's um, a very tricky road and a lot of hurdles, but to help others, do you think that's why? Because we were so broken, we know what it feels like to be. Absolutely. In pain. We can see people's pain. Yes, that's exactly it. When you see someone, and you're a tough guy, but when you see someone and you see, you connect with their pain and you think, I was that guy. Mm -hmm. And like, what, how fucked up was life then to, to just be yeah. in immersed in pain? Mm -hmm. Like in your heart, your heart has to go out. Yeah. Now, if you never knew that pain, you would not be able to, to connect with it and want to change it. Yeah. You know, so this is why people like us, that pain was a gift. Mm -hmm. It was really a gift. It didn't feel like it while it was happening, but it was a gift. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you, you wouldn't be driven to help so many people mm -hmm. if you weren't with that pain. Yeah. Huh. Yes, we live and learn. Everything's a lesson. So before we finish up, what is ayahuasca to you? Mm -hmm. So I think, well, to me, it's a, it, it's, just a lifesaver. That's a, it's a, it's a saver of lives. It really is. It's a, it's a gift. And, and, and who knows how this happened? You know that there's, they say there's a million plants in the Amazon basin. So who was brilliant enough to mix these two plants? Uh huh. It had to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Then you take this one and this one, you put it together and it fucking does this. Yeah. Crazy. So who, who started that? Who, Invented that was we, it Native we, Americans was it? No, we 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 believe it's it's it, it originated in the Amazon basin, probably mm -hmm. in Colombia or Peru, and and uh, but how did that happen? There's a, a billion plants. How did someone know to do this? So, what do I think? 
I think it came from somewhere else. Yeah. That, uh, came from, yeah. you know where you go. It came from up <laughs> there. <got> fucking space <laughs> anyway. So for people watching, especially the UK, 90% of my fan base is in the UK. Uh -huh. A lot of people, the messages I've been showing people and putting out, um, people are intrigued, Jerry. Yes. They're intrigued because a lot of the people who I know are struggling themselves. Of course. And for me to improve my life, I believe I'll go into the deep waters first to experience it for others. Yes. And then um, if the re I reap the rewards, then I believe that a whole lot of more people in the UK will come here. I hope so. Because, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough place just now. There's a lot of poverty. People yeah. are struggling. A lot of people, homelessness is on the rise. Suicide's on the rise. Yes. Diabetes is on the rise. Yes. Cancer's on the rise. So if this is a shortcut to cure those things, then this place is like heaven then. It is that. Yeah. yeah. I think and it it's, is. Um, it's starting to make a wee bit of sense. The first three nights was, was pain. It was difficult. Last night I had a couple of breakthroughs. This night I believe I'll, I'll shoot right through. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's a, an experience. But for people watching, what advice would you give them about ayahuasca? I would say the first thing is this, is that you want to be really careful about the set and setting you try this in. So, <clears throat> you know, when you come here, you have the classes that explain to you, they put everything into context. Mm -hmm. If you just roll into someone's uh, flat in London and lay down on a couch and drink this stuff, you're going to have a real hard time piecing shit together. Yeah. Uh, so set and setting is super important. Who, who brews the medicine is super important because just like uh, when your grandmother cooks something, it, it tastes like your grandmother's food because your grandmother's in it. Someone else can take that recipe and it's going to taste different because your grandmother's energy was in mm -hmm. that food so you got to be real careful of the medicine you're drinking because it could have all different kinds of energies yeah. in it yeah. yeah we'll touch on that because people have tried ayahuasca and died yeah that can happen um, yeah. but those places seem to be in the jungle yeah and huts with people yeah who don't really have an understanding what's it have you have ever had anybody take a bad reaction well, almost everybody has a bad reaction. Yeah, yeah. You're having a bad yeah, reaction. But nobody's <laughs> ever been hurt or injured. No. Nobody's ever really no. lived with uh, We had a lady, the, the day before she did ayahuasca, she was walking through a flea market in Tamarindo and she fell and she broke her arm. So that's the real... Yeah, one, but that's not... That's not... Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we had one guy that bit his tongue mm -hmm. uh, during the ceremony. And we, but he didn't even need stitches. We took yeah. it to, uh, but he didn't need yeah. stitches. So we have people who fall, mm -hmm. you know, you fall in ceremony. So that's why we have the rubber floors, yeah. you know, because yeah. you bounce. Yeah. You know? There's another thing, Jared, there's a fire outside. They tell you to speak to the fire. They say that fire's a spirit. Yes. Which is, you do, you do fire. see fucking shit in there, yeah, man. You do. <laughs> you just, fuck. Well, Think about fire. What is fire? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, you and I take fire for granted. Yeah. But when you really see fire in the medicine, it's its own spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is its own spirit. Grandfather fire. Yeah. yeah. So you, will you be here the rest of your life? I hope so. Yeah. I, I couldn't imagine being somewhere else. I go back into the city. I see my kids live in downtown LA and I can take the energy of it for maybe two days because there's so much shit there yeah. uh-huh it's so rough so much pain it's so much pain yeah. you know do you feel as if you have the world on your shoulders also sometimes because sometimes, you see this pain and yeah. you want to save everyone it would be wonderful if you could save yeah. everyone you know yeah and there's so much injustice in the world mm. there's so many there's so many things you know a very small amount of people are doing some really bad things mm -hmm. uh-huh and if the medicine could just get to those people like our some of our leaders and some of our business leaders and that if it could just get and change their heart mm -hmm. we could change the world in yeah. such a wonderful way yeah, yeah. powerful stuff jerry yeah. no doubt that's won't be the last time i see you um, <laughs> i appreciate coming here to create this documentary there's never there's no ayahuasca documentary like this this I is like it. going to be powerful It'll be on netflix um the world's going to see this and if i'm part of that people here and then I'm fucking grateful. I'm grateful too. Um, I'm but grateful tonight, for you. Yeah, but, likewise. Yeah. But tonight, <laughs> we go hard, 12 hours, and I can't wait. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Fantastic. Yeah.